John chapter 17. We gather every time for four or five basic reasons. Let me just run them quickly. Every time we gather the convergence of the saints is for this purpose and to this end. Number one, every time we gather before God, we gather for encounters. An encounter is an experience that furnishes the reality of a person a principle to your spirit encounters are important they create convictions without an encounter you cannot have conviction I know whom I believe the Bible says and I am persuaded persuaded encounters number two transformation through enlightenment the second reason why we gather is to give our destinies a chance to give our minds and our spirits an opportunity for transformation through the word of god the bible says we all with faces unveiled beholding him as in a mirror he says we are changed from one dimension of glory to the other even as by the spirit of god and the word of god is his instrument of transformation we are transformed by the power of the word it says do not be conformed to this age is the word aeon romans chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 it says i beseech thee brethren by the message of god that ye offer your bodies unto god it says and do not be conformed to this world is the greek word aeon the thinking pattern the ideology that comes with this system it says but be ye transformed like a fly moves from egg lava pupa and adult be transformed by the renewing of your mind that your mind being renewed will grant you the grace to prove what is that good that acceptable and that perfect will of god so when we gather like this expect the exegesis of scripture discipleship for the maturity and the victory of the saints is called doctrine hallelujah i commend you to god he says and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise even unto salvation are we still together number three every time we gather expect a manifestation of the love and the power of jesus christ through miracles signs and wonders you must expect this that every time we gather it is to see and to experience the miracles the signs the wonders that are revelations not just of the might of the man of god alone but the love of jesus when miracles happen they are letters from jesus to his creation to his saints saying i love you and i still care and also a revelation of the might of god number four every time we gather it is an opportunity for impartation impartation is powerful impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities our the results that we command in this kingdom are predicated upon the kind the level and the dimension of grace that is at work in us the bible says and god is able to make all grace not some grace grace is in dimensions there is the grace for speed there is the grace for favor there is the grace for breakthrough are we together now just because you have a measure or a dimension of grace does not mean you have everything god is able to make all grace so there are distributions listen carefully whilst the word of god is coming it does not have to be a conscious impartation the bible says while peter yet spake these things the holy ghost fell on all not some all day that heard him provided you can hear your spirit is ignited and you carry dimensions of graces that now begin to control new possibilities in your life listen to me 
if your life does not capture certain dimensions of results the honest explanation is that the grace for it is not there it's as simple and as honest as that hallelujah and so we must open up our hearts to receive in addition to that which he has given us we open up our hearts we open up our spirits to receive these superior dimensions of graces i long to see you he said that i may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye be established are we together and then number five every time we gather like this it is an opportunity for fellowship and to experience the blessing of the lord psalm 133 says how good and pleasant it is it says when brethren dwell together in unity no matter how powerful your secret place is with god there are certain dimensions of spiritual possibilities that only happen under a corporate atmosphere hallelujah while they prayed together and fasted the holy ghost spoke to them and said separate me paul and barnabas he spoke to them not to him the bible says how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity it likens it to the oil that comes from the head of aaron the priest down to his bed down to his cat the bible says there the lord had commanded the blessing so every time you come for koinonia or any spiritual meeting for that matter let your spirit be open for these five things encounters transformation that comes through the exegesis of the word spiritual illumination number three a manifestation of the power of god to meet needs to provide supernatural solutions number four impartations because every time god grants a grace to jacob it is because he intends for it to reach israel it is not god's idea that he's that his graces reside with only one person so when he calls jacob is because he has israel in mind are we together tonight i want to teach on knowing god we're building we spoke about doctrine the last time we met and we said how that doctrines are a body of truth that are responsible for the maturing of the saints haven't experienced and seen signs and wonders i have told you and i will say it again that signs and wonders do not establish the saints listen to me no matter how anointed no matter how powerful no matter the charismatism around the signs and the wonders that you see and experience it does create conviction number two they are they are tokens of the father's love number three it announces what god is doing within a territory then it becomes a consolation to the christian experience of the saints but it was not allocated for the maturity of the saints only the word of god communicated taught accurately sustains the ability to mature the saints are we together so we must submit to the teaching of the word we must submit to doctrine we will continue to experience miracles signs and wonders but our eyes must be first on jesus and then the truth of his word because heaven and earth will pass away the disciples saw miracles but jesus disappeared for only 72 hours and they denied him they ran away so miracles are not enough to establish people they saw miracles remember when he wanted to wash peter's feet peter said no way later on peter said wash my feet will bath me and you see all those emotional vacillations were proof of immaturity as soon as judas came and betrayed jesus the disciples thought jesus would use his invincibility to just defeat those people when he submitted to death they ran away they didn't just run away they ran disappointed john 21 peter said i can't do two zero i go a fishing the other disciples said we go with you let's go back to what we were doing before this karma came to deceive us they toiled all night and there was no catch then they saw jesus he needed their attention again so he used the miracle little children have you any catch and peter said no 
and he said cast your net to the right side and when he casted his net watch this now he was not able to drag the bible says for the multitude of fish are we together then the goodness of god convicted him immediately he knew he was a sinner he was naked he walked close and said depart from me i am a sinner and then he called him and when they sat down it's amazing that when peter came he met jesus already roasting fish that's what your bible said where he got it from is a mystery that he will have to tell us it's in your bible and then now that he got his attention he said sit down simon Barjona, lovest thou me more than these you came because of the manifestation of the miraculous but sit down because i'm going to give you an assignment to feed my sheep and also to feed my lamb the son of jonah do you love me more than miracles do you love me enough to be mentored enough to mentor others miracles are powerful but we cannot dwell just in the realm of the miraculous we have to trust god for the exegesis of truth and tonight i want us to discuss very briefly the subject of knowing god look at me your confidence in this kingdom is predicated not just upon the reality of god but your knowledge of the holy john 17 please we'll read from verse 1 to 3 let's go john 17 this is jesus this is the real lord's prayer jesus is praying now theologically speaking what we call the lord's prayer yeah even though it's the lord's prayer but it was a lecture it was a mentorship session teaching the disciples the protocol of prayer that works are we together this is jesus praying now the bible says these words spake jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour is come glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee verse 2 it says as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him what is eternal life verse 3 please read with me ready one to read and this is life eternal that they may know thee the only true god and jesus whom thou hast sent watch this that means the journey of eternal life does not stop just with a confession your act of confessing the lordship of jesus according to romans 10 from verse 8 down to 10 only initiates you into the process that administers eternal life it says eternal life is a journey it's not just a one-off experience this is eternal life jesus is teaching the rabbi he says that they may know you please give it to us verse 3 this is eternal life that they may know you the only true god and jesus whom thou hast sent so if you do not know god and you do not know jesus there is a dimension of eternal life that has not been ministered to you the bible puts it this way john chapter 10 and verse 10 he says the thief cometh not that means you have no business seeing him around except for this to steal to kill and to destroy then jesus says but i am come that ye may have life that's a level but that you don't stop there you move from the realm of life to a dimension of abundant life you can have life but you can have abundant life abundant life is based on knowledge the knowledge of the holy are we together it is important that the saints know the lord many religions now respectfully speaking in fact most religions do not have a provision where you know the deity or the personality that is the object of worship and adoration in fact intimacy and relationship is not required in many religions it's just an observance of rituals and then certain benefits that are derived from it the faith life is the only dimension of life that requires that all you receive become a derivative of a relationship when you go to a herbalist god forbid god forbid but when you go to a herbalist for instance he's not going to ask you do you know my name are you interested do you like me that, no 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 that's not why you are there you may never even know his name why are you here i'm here because i want to win some political position or an election or something for instance 
and he says okay this is what you will need bring a b c and you bring it and he says go it's done you may not even remember where the road to his shrine is again because every other life outside of the faith life does not demand relationship but god is very intentional about relationship is someone learning something so the kind of christianity that is all about receiving just receiving breakthroughs just receiving liftings now they are powerful but you will never be able to enjoy the fullness of the life of god until you draw nigh to him to a level of a deeper relationship that is more than things more than cars more than houses more than miracles more than political positions more than business breakthroughs i don't downplay these things but if that is the subject and the object of your pursuit you will eventually be frustrated in your christian experience when god truly wants to bless a man he gives him himself that is the real gift god gives those he loves he does not give you his hand he does not give you his power he gives you him give me you everything else can wait give me you i hope i'm not too late lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you it's my prayer lord, lord give me ah. you more than cars more than reputation give me you everything else can wait give me you i hope i'm not too late lord give me you lord give me you If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. One more time. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Listen down. We live in a world where every other thing is important except God. Every other thing is important. Whether you are born again or not, once you are rich, people believe you have everything. Whether you are born again and serious with God or not, once you have a privileged political position. Whether you are born again or not, we downplay Jesus. When you meet a young man and you ask him, so what have you achieved in life? He says, well, not much. I don't have a job yet. Um, I've not been able to build my house, but one thing I have is a relationship. Society will laugh at you and say, what a fool. You are wasting your time and wasting your years. But then, if that gentleman is a disorganized person spiritually but has a house has a car they say wow you are a fine young man you are doing well it's just that you just need to be serious look at how we have downplayed spiritual things if all i have is jesus i got something more than i will tell it to myself jesus is more than gold. listen to me the real proof of love is not things. The real proof of love is giving yourself. So when God gives you himself, he gives you everything. When you give him offering, you have not given him everything. When you give him tithe, you have not given him everything. If you truly love him, what you give is not what you have. What you give is you my best lord is everything i have my best lord 
I give all I have to you. Listen. Years ago, I sat down one day and I was overwhelmed at the faithfulness of God in my life. I said, look what you've done to me. Look what you've made out of my life. And so this song came. You made me great. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you. You made me great. You made me great. You made me special. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you, my best Lord, is everything I have, my best Lord, I give all I have to you, my best Lord, is everything I have, my best Lord, I give all I have to you. If you truly love him more than your money, more than his support for a man of God and a church, more than giving gifts, the real gift you can give the Lord in honor and in gratitude for giving himself is to give yourself. This is why this ministry is called Koinonia. It's a platform of passionate lovers of God. People who are looking for more than his hand. People who are looking for more than his wisdom. You know, if I don't get to the word, I can stay here because what I'm giving you is a piece of my secret place. Sincerely, let me tell you, when I spend time with God, I hardly ask him for things. And this is not because of the faithfulness of God over my life, no. My concern is Him. Can you really have God and lack anything? I was told of a story of a man who had very foolish sons. And he was a very wealthy man. He was about to die. And he said, now these my sons. And he had a servant. And he said, all right. You people have been foolish all through my lifetime with you. I'm about to die. I will give you an opportunity to pick one of my assets, anyone, just name one, but only one. And he had a lot. He said, whatever else is left, my servant will carry it. And the boys were angry. He said, how could daddy do this? You have estates, you have empires, and you're giving us just one to pick one. And one of the sons looked at the servant and said, I choose the servant. But the first time the father saw wisdom before going to his grave. If I have to choose one and the rest is given to the servant, let that one I choose be the servant. So when God puts a car, a political position, watch this. Lifting, anointing, emoji, anointing, revelation. I'm not being sarcastic. Fail. I know what many of us will choose. People have rejected me. I need fame. You quickly pick fame. And then he puts himself and he watches as many Christians come to pick other things. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah opportunity to choose him kick that car kick that fame kick that ministry kick that preaching kick everything and hold on to him like jacob held on to him he said i will not let you go i made a mistake in chapter 28 i was punished for more than 20 years in the house of leban because i chose other things aside you someone this is a message for you right now to pray you are saying i'm busy that's what you are doing 
to fast i am busy to seek his face he said you know there's this new appointment i just had and i need to travel around the world um there are dignitaries coming from everywhere and he's looking at you and saying do you not know my value i'm not wasting your time believe me i'm showing you a secret of secrets more than gifts more than houses that you choose him and what men pray for become your gift they will bring it to you i made up my mind that you will become the object of my pursuit not ministry no I will give up Koinonia and close down Koinonia in Abuja 1,000 times to preserve my relationship with him. I will cancel any ministration without thinking twice if it ever interrupts his presence. You love me today because what of what he has made out of my life. I will be foolish to leave him. Do you leave what works? God is speaking to someone. You need to return back. This is not what I even want to talk about. Oh. But God is speaking to someone. The reason why things have not moved in your life is because you focused on many things. You have been taught by society that Jesus Christ is a nuisance and that the secret place does not carry destiny value. So every time you stay with God, you feel cheated. While the rest go ahead of you, you feel cheated. You feel foolish for giving God your time and your attention. My life is a testament of what can happen to a man when you give God time. God is speaking to someone. I believe that this is by the Spirit. I've not even begun to talk about If this is where we stop, that's it. God is calling on people. Return to the secret place. Return to the place where I made you. I found you as nothing and I helped you. Now you are allowing distraction. Distraction. Listen to me, dear people of God. We live in a celebrity world where everyone wants to be a celebrity. And don't get me wrong, God wants to lift you, you know. When you watch people come in, you just admire them and you hope to be like them. And some of you can't wait for the service to finish so that you say, give me a double portion and all these things that people do. Listen to me. Sit down and take God seriously. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. I love your presence. Yeah. can give you fake power but he cannot give you presence no you can fake power but you cannot fake a real relationship listen to me in this kingdom our honor is derived from our relationship our the power that we communicate the influence the grace is predicated upon our relationship wouldn't trade you don't sing listen to what i'm singing i wouldn't trade you for riches on and i really mean it you are truly you are my everything 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 Lord, you are everything to me. Everything.
everything, everything, Lord, you are everything, everything to me. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Truly great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly. Some of you are crying. I wanted to talk about something else. But you see how the Holy Spirit leads us. Please just focus on what God is saying. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Where it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the When Jacob dismissed his wives, when Jacob dismissed his cattle, when he was alone, then a man came. There is something about the jealousy of God. He will not loiter around when there are many other things distracting you. So he will step back to honor your decision to ignore him until life forces you to need him. God is speaking to you. You may be a man of God. I want crowd. I want people to call my name. I want everyone to listen to my teachings. You may be sincere, but while you are doing all that drama, heaven is watching you. And God is saying, is this all that you want? Is this all that I mean to you? To be a celebrity? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. All I want is to win an election. Let me become a famous person. All I want is to join the billionaire list. There is something about a heart that pants after God. I know how you are going to do it, but I leave you with the God of your salvation. Tell him I'm here again, oh God, sincerely. Finally, finally I hear you. I hear your call, I hear your call. Cry unto God. Hear me, I'm not wasting your time. This is church. We are not faking it here. Sincerely from our hearts. This is why many do not see the power and the glory of God. There's such distraction. Pursuit for things. I'm not against that. But it must be everything. Talk to the Lord. You came to church. That I may know him and the power 
of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death this was the prayer of apostle paul after the miracles after all of the manifestations he said away with the power away with the fame my desire is that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised my one desire is that you be praised that you be praised Jeremiah chapter 9, please sit down. Jeremiah chapter 9 from verse 23. Here's what the prophet taught us. Jeremiah chapter 9. Thus saith the Lord, Koinonia, hear me, body of Christ, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. This, verse 24, is the pride of the believer. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Our pride in this kingdom is more than the accolades of men, more than human achievements, as important as they are. The knowledge of the holy. This is what the generals of old had. They didn't have all the education. They didn't have all the prowess. But they had him. They sought him with their lives. I was in Lagos this afternoon and I had the opportunity to just speak with a few pastors before rushing down here. And one of them was a pastor in one of the old denominations. And when I met him, I said, tell me about a few of your people i heard that god did mighty things with them i didn't have the opportunity to meet them and when he began to tell me some of the great things i said oh god where have we kept your power where have we kept the grace we read these things like parables but they really happen we need to restore a fresh passion unashamed passion unashamed hunger it says let him that glory and glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 b the bible says the b part but the people but the family that do know their god they shall be strong there is proof i can know that you know god there are two things that happen to you when you truly know god number one capacity strength the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle the diagnosis is that your strength is small god you did not prosper me i will leave you it's a sign that you do not know him Lord, I've been a worker in church for a long time and you have refused to bless me. I will leave you. That is a transaction. In as much as he has covenanted to bless you, when you truly know God, it's a point of no return. It's like an initiation into something that you cannot come out of. Capacity. They shall be strong. Number two is a promise. They shall do exploits not talk exploits not wish exploits that anyone who pays the price to know god it is guaranteed that you will do exploits in ministry in business in life and in destiny i submit to you therefore that the reason why we have so many well-meaning believers but there are no notable dimensions of the possibilities of God captured within our territory. It's because very few people have paid the price to know Him. It's costly to know God. The price for all of God is all of you. It's costly. The price for life is death. It's costly. 
have to look away from many things that is the price oh but when you find him then the world begins to look for you when you find him then what you have been looking for begins to look for you when you find him all men seek for you let me quickly share with you the plan for knowing God you cannot know God outside of these platforms now look up why do I have to teach you the platforms because I want to bring balance to something now look at me there is a side effect when your hunger is not guided unguided hunger is what has delved people into Scientology delve people into witchcraft some sincerely because when you have hunger if your hunger is not guided within the jurisdiction of truth you are going to get into error there are people who it was their hunger for power and for more of God that drove them to the wilderness and they met with demons and met with spirits and came back with encounters that are not of the Christ listen very carefully because if we stop at just marketing a zeal and we do not bring balance to it then we also give satan room to take advantage of the appetite of people there are people who waited upon god seven days dry and what appeared to them was not god because their hunger was wild they started searching the internet for everything superstitious then they see a name that looks like God and they say it's an old Egyptian deity and in their curiosity they start studying and before you know it they have bought books they have bought all kinds of things I must guide your search hunger is dangerous hunger attracts everything God men Satan are we together Years ago, I finished then in Zaria. I finished a program like this, and suddenly I saw a group of young guys just came and stood in front of me, you know. And one of them believed that he was an incarnate of one of the saints from the Bible, and then the remaining guys were like his protégés, his disciples, with absolute boldness and confidence. He stood in front of me he said he was sent you know because he felt he had a role to play i could see the sincerity in the hearts of these young people but i knew they were already in deception the devil capitalized on their hunger a preacher preached hunger but the hunger was not guided you don't meet god everywhere there are coordinates that guide your pursuit and if you are not exposed to it and your hunger goes on rampage the devil is ever waiting to quench that test and create one that will not be quenched. Satan is an opportunist. So they tell you you are going to be a prophet. And you carry that prophecy and lock yourself for days. Lord, where is the prophetic grace? And Satan begins to speak. And you think you are being open to the realm of the spirit. And you encounter a grace. You are convicted based on your encounter. But there is no basis for you to vet that encounter. And so you can come out from that encounter and mislead yourself and mislead others. Did the Bible not say the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons? It's in your Bible. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart. They don't have to be evil. They are just sincere people who are not guided. There are some of you right now under the sound of my voice, inside and outside, following online. You are probably already delving into that error. I have seen people who went to lock themselves to pray because they wanted to know God. And the next thing, they had to take them out to the psychiatry. Have you seen people like that? Because they came up with all kinds of strange experiences. And they believed that everybody had a problem except them. Only for them to wake up and see that they are under drips, they are under medical supervisions, something had happened to them. There are people who had spirits appear to them and lead them to go to places and do things, mimicking the Christ. 
and at the end of it listen to me just because god is mysterious does not mean his ways cannot be vetted there are indices that can tell you whether this is god or this is not so that people do not bring and you know we live in a world where the moment people create superstition around the things of god things like god said or things like this is a vision i had suddenly we become quiet no you can probe into anything using spiritual parameters i'm not teaching you to go and insult people i'm not teaching you to go and cause trouble for people but this is to supply maturity that we can know god constructively in a way and a manner that our lives would demonstrate that we have met the god of the bible paul said there is as it were many voices and that none of these voices is without effect there are people who the voice of death called them they thought it was the holy ghost they came out of their houses never to return again quickly number one the first platform, the first authorized platform for knowing God is scripture. Write it down, please. The first authorized platform, doctrinally speaking, for knowing God is scripture. Second Timothy, please, chapter 3 from verse 15 and 16. Let's hurry up, we have to pray. Second Timothy, chapter 3 from verse 15 and 16. It says, and that from a child, look up please, thou hast known the holy scriptures. It's not only God who is holy alone, scriptures too are holy. The holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. The Bible says all scripture is in your Bible, is given by inspiration of God and that scripture is profitable read with me for number one doctrine number two reproof number three correction number four instruction in righteousness the effect is in the next verse it says that the man of god may be mature the word perfect there does not mean blameless it means mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works this is the assignment of scripture all scripture not the one you like all scripture now please look at me from a historic standpoint when you read this bible that was canonized by a group of people containing 66 books and sold by bookstores like zondervan and so on and so forth that is more than you will find out that there are lots of human imperfections theologically speaking the old testament was written in hebrew and the new testament was written in a combination of greek and aramaic are we together now and according to the principles of translation there are certain words that um, have multiple meanings and you will find out that they have a formula that would guide their translating the bible and so many things were translated the way they were not accurately translated there is no doubt that there are human imperfections here this is why the bible does not say you should read it alone you are supposed to read under the influence of the holy spirit and when he the spirit is come the bible says the spirit of truth he will guide you truth can destroy even though it is truth the devil can use truth to destroy you if it is not guided. The Bible, scripture, is the first platform for knowing God. Watch this. That means someone can get born again under your church, under your influence, and you can commend him. You can give him scripture and expect that as he studies the Bible, he can know God. What about God is revealed in scripture? Right, please. Number one, his character. The first thing that is revealed from scripture about God is his character. Character. Number two, for the sake of time, his methodologies. Every time we study the Bible to know God, these are the two things we are looking for. Number one, his character. Number two, his principles or his methodologies, his modus operandi. The kingdom has its way of operating. So I can judge all things 
by the character of God that is revealed in scripture. For instance, I find from scripture that God is love. For instance, I find in scripture that God is merciful. So I can judge everything, the prophetic word coming to me, the manifestation of a believer based on the reference of God's character. Everybody say character. There are people all over the internet. I'm not on social media, but there are people all over the internet purporting to be me, unfortunately and sadly. And they have extracted hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, from sincere people. Are we together now? I was shown a platform with over 43 books that were written by Joshua Selman. I've not written one. Five star ratings. People were rushing. Now, listen, let me tell you. When you, if someone calls you for instance and says, I am Joshua Selman, can you transfer one million naira for the building of an orphanage? Now, your confusion or your deliverance will be based on your knowledge of my character. Are we together now? Number one, I am so busy. When I'm free, I'm sleeping. So the person who has that time to call you, there are times that those who know me, I don't even call at that time. If someone calls you at that time, you know that is a liar from the pit of hell. There is something about God you can know and you use like a reference. You can judge things and say, no, God does not behave like this. You can have the boldness to judge prophecy. You can have the boldness to vet an operation within a spiritual circle. Listen, the character of God is not the one you know. There is more than the one you know. I'm not talking of a denomination's approach to God. I'm talking of the knowledge of the God of the Bible. Are we together? Everybody say his character. So when Isaiah came to Hezekiah in chapter 38 of Isaiah, he said, Isaiah, I heard from God. Hezekiah, set your house in order. You are not going to leave. Hezekiah said, I respect you, man of God, so long. And he turned to God. There is something I know about God that his mercy is not his judgment. I knew every morning. And he said, God, but I can negotiate my longevity. If I die, who will praise you? And God said, ah, this man got me. David knew something about God. Every time God wanted to destroy him, he would sing his sins as a song and dance before God and say, Lord, are you not merciful? Music director, sing it. And God would say, what do I do with this man? Finally, he earned the title, a man after God's heart. David. There is something about God we need to know. So that the devil does not steal into your passion and lie to you. When you are broke and failing and things are going bad, the devil can steal into your sincerity and make you live a mediocre and a weak life and mentor you into believing that God can allow you like that until you search scripture to see the character of God that he who did not spare his son he gave his son freely without thinking about it will he not much more give you all things to enjoy that if you being evil know how to give good gifts how much more will your heavenly father so immediately you know that that thing you think is God is the devil because you have judged by the character of God listen to me you know why it is important to read your Bible? It's more than just easing the guilt of feeling that you are not spiritual. You read the Bible so that you are exposed to God's character. And then his methodologies, his ways of doing things. Let me tell you this. I don't mean to insult anyone, you know, I'm called to minister to the body of Christ. But there are many practices that may be sincere but we need to look at them from the lens of scripture in God's economy how results are produced are as important as the results themselves do not say it doesn't matter the most important thing is let there be results no there is a predefined methodology 
Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. It says to stand ye in the way, even that old path. It says to ask, ask for the old path. Where is the good way? When you find it, walk therein, and it will bring you into your Sabbath. Hallelujah. So we study scripture to know the character of God. We study scripture to know the ways of God. Platform number two, very quickly. The second platform that helps us to know God in this kingdom are the names of God. Write it down, please. The names of God. Exodus chapter 3. We'll start from verse 13 down to 15. Exodus chapter 3. This was Moses having an encounter with the God of the Bible in the burning bush. Until then, he had not met the God of the Hebrews. Remember that Moses was raised an idol worshiper. I hope you know. Look up. I hope you know. I hope you know that Moses in his hedonistic state wrote books. Moses was a writer. He wrote books that are still being used today. Books that teach. I hope you know that Moses was being trained to be the next Pharaoh. He was going to be the one to succeed Pharaoh. For you to be a Pharaoh in Egypt, you have to be half man and half wizard. They would teach you the art of the constellations. They would teach you how to make the stars. They would teach you to how to align planetary bodies for your advantage. They will teach you how to manipulate the elements of nature. What do you think Janus and Jambres were there for? They were not just magicians, they were lecturers. Hallelujah. It was from that standpoint that Moses ran until he got married and was tending the sheep of his father-in-law Jethro. And then the Bible says that he saw a bush that was burning and would not be consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight. And when the Lord saw that he had turned aside, he said, Moses, take off your shoes, for where thou standest is holy ground. And then the encounter continued. Now 3 verse 15, please. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Because you see, God preserves his dimensions in his names. Don't forget this. Every dimension of God's glory is captured and preserved in a name. Every time he revealed himself in a certain way to the nation of Israel, they captured that dimension. If they saw his supplies, they captured it in a name called Rapha and preserved it. So any day they want to see that dimension again, they will invoke Rapha. Are we together? If they saw his deliverance, they called him Sebaoth and captured that dimension and hid it. So every time they were in war, they would study the situation and study what name of God representing his dimension and they will invoke that name. So Moses is saying, when I meet these people and I say I have come as a deliverer, they will ask me, what dimension of God did you encounter? Who sent you? And you see, Pharaoh also had names that were preserved. Egypt had thousands of gods. And all these gods had their assignment and they respected one another. They were gods of fertility, they were gods of agriculture, they were gods of so on, like we have in many, you know, traditions around Africa. We have gods that do this, they specialize in this area, that area. Each god has his requirement to invoke that dimension in him. And God said, give it to us please, verse 13. Moses, you are asking what dimension of me you want to see. I am that I am. Is a very dangerous name that means every other name they called me was simply your benefit for your benefit I am so mighty no man can fathom me but I decided to fragment myself into dimensions so that I can give men a chance to relate with me so Sikenu is still Jaira is still Rafa but he broke his dimensions so that we can know him 
the same way both man and woman i hope you know that both man and woman are dimensions of god he separated himself number one for procreation but number two so that the clearest expression of god demonstrated on earth will be the relationship between a man and his wife it was god's design that the first example of god children will see is not a film it's not a pastor it's daddy and mommy so mommy is a dimension of god that's the reason why her and the holy spirit is god who is at work in us both to will and to do that means when god wants to bless you the spirit of the lord will breathe upon you to invoke the dimension of him that should be made manifest all of him cannot show up you can't stand it no even in heaven he feels all things are we together so if it is a healing service god will move the worship ministers and they will find themselves singing songs that invoke that dimension they, they will find out that they are, he, he answers to his name the moment you begin to sing songs as we worship in your presence there is healing let's go the last for tonight and we'll stop here the third platform and it truly is the greatest platform for knowing the lord knowing god is jesus himself the christ of god colossians 1 and verse 15 we have to pray colossians 1 and verse 15 the bible calls jesus the image of the invisible god the firstborn of every creature let me stop here for tonight let me explain to you what that means that jesus did not just come to save sinners alone jesus christ came first as a correction to our interpretation of who god is there are many things about god that men did not know because he operated in an invisible realm so satan and the mistake of prophets mixed together produced different kinds of views about god when jesus came he came as god in the flesh this is what the bible calls the mystery of godliness that God is made manifest in the flesh. Are we together? So I look at Jesus as a representation of the character of God. Everything Jesus did truly is what God does. Everything Jesus did not do, no matter who credited it to God, is what God does not do. Are we together? So when the Bible says God is love, we can verify looking at Jesus. Did Jesus demonstrate love? We see love everywhere. Based on the revelation of God through Jesus, we can agree that it is true that God is love. God is a supplier. Is that true? We verify from the life of Jesus. So when you study Jesus, Jesus becomes a theological reference for vetting anything that was credited to God, good or bad. Do not forget this. If you do not know Jesus, you will be confused about God. Because God in the Bible referred to many things. And there were times they used the word Lord. L-O-R-D. It was used for men. It was used for kings. It was used for deities. And then it was used for God, Yahweh. So you would need Jesus to verify. Many things that were credited to God, God had no business in it. As revealed by Jesus so we look at Jesus and we learn God we look at Jesus and Jesus becomes like a lecture manual that begins to educate and edit and reorient our understanding about God no matter what which prophet said no matter what which saint of old said about God if it is not captured in Jesus we have a right to vet it jesus the revelation of god are we together now yes he came as the word that became flesh the living logos of the father we'll continue next week we have to pray rise up on your feet just pray a simple prayer in one minute lord reveal yourself to me 
as I study scripture, open me up to understand the character of God. As I study scripture, open me up to understand the methodologies of the kingdom. And then pray, reveal your names to me. Reveal your names. That they transcend songs, they transcend sermons. And then Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Let me study Jesus to know God. Let my confidence about God, the integrity of his person. Through Jesus, you have a right to vet every statement that has been made about God. He came as the manifestation of God. He came to end the confusion and the superstition around God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Watch this. When Jesus came, he revealed the Father to us. The love of the Father. He demonstrated the love of the Father through the substitutionary sacrifice that he went through. He said, for God so loved the world, he proved it that God truly loved us by giving Jesus. And he says that whosoever believes in him, that that person whosoever will not perish, but have life everlasting. Tonight, I do not want us to end without giving our precious people an opportunity. There are people scattered inside, outside, following online from whatever nation. You need this Jesus who came to reveal the love of the Father. He didn't come to make religion out of people. He didn't come to make people religious people. No. He came as a testament of the love of the Father. Very quickly, you are here and you are saying, Apostle, as you were talking about knowing God and all through the worship, through the testimonies, I have seen a need for Jesus in my life. Wherever you are, or you are rededicating your life, if you are here and outside, just outside the, at the gallery, you are free to come to the front here. And then, for those who are outside, please, all the old, over, other overflows, I would request that you move to the front of your projector screen. So for all who are here, carry your bags, your Bible, everything you came to church with. As we celebrate you, please make your way to the front. <laughs> Koinonia, celebrate, celebrate Jesus. Come. Come to Jesus. Win that war tonight. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Is there still someone who is saying, Apostle, I want to win that war tonight. God bless you. Leave your seat and come to Jesus. You may be the hope of your family. Do it for your destiny. Do it for your children. Do it for your children's children. God bless you. Koinonia, don't be tired. Celebrate them. You're connecting from any and every nation. You want to make Jesus Lord of your life. Follow me as I pray this prayer. The overflows. Celebrate them. There are people coming from everywhere. The Bible declares that he who will come to God, he will in no wise cast away. Thank you. Thank you so much for making this noble decision. Listen to me. It is the wisest decision that any man can make in this life. To submit to the Lordship of the Christ. And to be a recipient of his life. I want to lead you in that simple but powerful prayer. Lift your right hand and please say after me. Those in the overflow, please join them. Those online following, join them. Say this truthfully speaking. Say this passionately. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Are we together? Say, Lord Jesus. One more time. Say, Lord Jesus. I love you. And I believe in you. That you are Savior. That you are Lord that you are king tonight i have heard your word i make jesus lord of my life be my savior be my king from today and for the rest of my life i obtain forgiveness i obtain the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness and i reign in life i declare that the power of sin the power of Satan, the power of the grave is broken over my life. I am a recipient 
of the life of God. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you as always for these ones you have brought. May your grace keep them. Let this be a journey that will only be from glory to glory. I break the power of sin. I break the power of Satan. I break the power of the flesh from your life. And I declare that your path will be like the shining light, shining ever brighter, even unto the perfect day. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, that he will guide you and he will turn you into signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Now there's a gentleman waving, should be blessed and should be delivered. Now I bless your week beginning. In the name of Jesus, go and excel. I declare that the power of the Holy Spirit will evidently speak over your life. Everything that represents a challenge in your life, you return next week with testimonies. May the good hand of God rest upon your life. I release you as signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. May the grace of God be evident upon your life. In the name of Jesus, be a soul winner, be a transformer, carry the power of the Holy Spirit, provoke the, 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 the grace of God that is upon your life to be a blessing to others. I declare that you go from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Please do well for those of you who have vehicles. Let me plead with you in as much as I know that society may not be so safe, but do well. You may be a good Samaritan to give someone a lift if the need arises. Please, if your car can be that available, please avail yourself. After the grace, do well to greet someone and then we depart and then please let's live in an orderly fashion there are thousands of people and we have to be careful so that there are no stampedes just walk with the officials as they guide you through the gates in the name of jesus let's share the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ i want to appreciate you for stopping by and uh, listening to apostle jesus shama and i believe that this message has blessed your life and this message will continue work in you until it brings forth the glory of the Lord upon your life. And I want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel. If you have not subscribed, you can also share with other people. And I want you to believe.